Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 20th of July, 2011. 42 years ago this day, Neil Armstrong set foot on the Moon. So today's trivia question is, what was the name of the region of the Moon that he set foot on? The answer will be given at the end. Yesterday, after getting a nice C flare, the Sun has gone quiet again, producing a series of B flares. Have we seen this pattern before or what? So let's take a look at the sunspot regions and see what's going on. Part of the reason for this quieting down is the fact that we've lost several active regions. Two went over the limb and several died away like 1256. Region 1258 is still there but is very weak. Region 1251 is a single stable spot and won't produce very much activity. 1254 is the largest and most active region on the disk. And region 1259 is no slouch but it doesn't seem to be growing very much. The plage region that I mentioned yesterday coming over the northeast limb doesn't have any spots with it, which is consistent with the relatively weak uh, coronal emissions that we saw in the movies yesterday. But you do realize that yesterday was one of, we had one of the highest sunspot numbers since I started doing this, and we had some of the lowest activity. That allows me to get back onto my hobby horse about how useless sunspot numbers are as a gauge of activity. The white light and magnetic movies from the Helioseismic Magnetic Imager on the Solar Dynamics Observatory show the decay of all these various regions. In the magnetic movie you can see that they get more diffuse and, and less dynamic as time goes by. From the AIA instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory you can take a look at the transition region movie about 50,000 degrees and there is a spectacular eruption off of the northeast limb. I've made a close-up movie so you can see the details of this event. It starts off as a simple growing prominence and then suddenly you see this huge arcade of loops lifting up into the corona. As we often see, all the loops are twisted and it's the unraveling of this twisted magnetic field that is actually the release of the energy that we see in events like this. And there's a hint of a coronal mass ejection off the east limb as a result of this eruption. In the low temperature coronal movie, keep an eye on the west limb, there are some spectacular loop uh, dynamics going on there as these regions go over the back side of the sun. In the high temperature coronal movie, keep an eye on the coronal hole in the southwest. That's the origin of the high speed solar wind stream that's currently bathing the earth at the moment. Soho is still having software problems, but if you look carefully you see a hint of uh, the coronal mass ejection off of the east limb. The A spacecraft gives us information on the solar wind. You can see while the temperature and the density remain relatively constant, the velocity has continued to increase over the last 24 hours. Meanwhile, the high energy electron flux measured by the GOES-13 and 15 spacecraft has been bouncing around all over the place for the last 24 hours, probably as a result of this high speed solar wind stream. However, as we've had no large flares, the proton flux remains stoically at a very low level. Images from the NOAA 15 spacecraft show us that both the auroral zones in the northern and southern hemisphere look pretty agitated, and you can see from the KP index that we've had some level of minor storming going on, again as a result of this high speed coronal wind stream. So in summary then, the X-ray background has fallen to the B2 level, the sunspot number is reduced to 96 and I think it'll go lower, radio sun intensity has dropped to 100 solar flux units. Meanwhile, the solar wind speed has increased to over 630 kilometers per second with a density of four protons per cubic centimeter. And we've had some minor storming conditions in geospace. My forecast for the next 24 hours is we're likely to get intermittent C flares, but the chances of getting M or X flares are very poor. The sunspot number will probably drop lower, but the chances of getting coronal mass ejections are quite good. The solar wind speed will remain high and geomagnetic conditions will remain unsettled, although we're unlikely to get a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours. In the longer term, there doesn't seem to be very much due back over the east limb for at least another three or four days. So once again, we're going to have to rely on the emergence of new regions or growth in existing regions if activity is going to increase. If you want to find out more about what's going on in the sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see earlier editions of The Sun today, go to my channel and they're all listed there along with some other videos that you might find fun to watch. The answer to the trivia question is the Sea of Tranquility. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.